Hi, welcome to my channel, Inner Goddess Guidance. My name is Lara, and I created this channel for people who are on a self-healing journey on their way to self-mastery with really the intention of, of spreading healthy love um, around the world. And so I am excited today because I've been really struggling <laughs> with this topic. So if you're new to my channel, um, what I've been doing is uh, assisting people in their journey through creating oracle cards for themselves. And as we really deeply consider one topic at a time, um, there's healing involved in that process as we go through our own recognitions and realizations um, about how that particular topic functions in our lives. And I make little videos or find some resources to help with that. And, um, you know, we've been going through some really funny energies lately, partially because of the eclipse that happened on the 27th. And then there's a bunch of, of planets in retrograde. Um, and it's interesting, the topic that was chosen in the Facebook group, so there's a Facebook group um, to assist with the Oracle card creation, to put all of our thoughts and, and just support each other, share cards, for example, that we're creating or resources we use to create the cards. Um, you're invited to join, and if you'd like that information, it's in the description box. Um, please join. I'd love to have you. We'd love to have you. Um, but I put these little polls in, in to select the next topic, and the topic that was chosen was um, intuition. And I think it was chosen two days ago or three days ago. And I totally moved forward the way that I normally do with um, finding information and sort of delving into it, and asking myself some questions the same way that, um, you know, I suggest that you ask yourself questions um, in your journal and then explore them. And I just really felt blocked. Um, and part of that was my energy was shifting, I think, because of the stuff that's going on, you know, with the planets and everything. Um, but I think the other part, uh, I finally, finally snapped into view uh, for me today. And so I'm really excited that I get to finally sit down and make this video. This is the, the third day that I have attempted it. Um, and I think we're finally going to get through it. So the, the topic um, that we are looking at is intuition. And so I always start by asking myself some questions and exploring the answers to those questions in my journal. It's not really that I think we're ever going to come up with definitive answers, but it is in the journey of exploring something deeply that we, we, we begin to clarify the meaning of, of a topic or an issue for ourselves in our own life. This is all about coming into clarity for yourself and how something functions for you because all of our journeys are different. We're all different people. And um, something is only good or usable as we integrate that understanding into ourselves and then, um, and then use it. So, <laughs> so intuition. I started with some questions. I explored those questions. Um, I, I did some research on just like what's the definition of the word, how have other people defined intuition. Um, one of the things that I discovered is that a lot of people use the words intuition and instinct kind of synonymously when they're, when they're actually um, differences between them. Um, and I'll go into that. Then I looked at some videos about what some, you know, experts have said. Intuition has actually been studied for a long, long time. It's a fascinating topic that, you know, whole books are written on intuition. <laughs> so it's no doubt why, you know, in a couple of days, I wasn't going to all of a sudden, you know, become an expert on intuition. Um, and that's that wasn't even really, like I said earlier, it's not the point to become an expert. Um, just, just a way to understand it, integrate for ourselves. So let me start with some of the things that I discovered. 
and then what I think my block was to doing the video. Um, so first, intuition versus instinct. So instinct is something that is is natural. It's inborn. Um, one person described it's it's the reaction that baby sea turtles have when they're first hatched and then they just head straight out into the ocean. Somehow they know to do that. That's instinct. I think we have a lot of instinct when it comes around, especially those of us who are mothers, around mothering or fathering. We have instinctual reactions to things. Um, so it's a very natural inborn thing. We've had that since the dawn of time. Um, it's in all animals. It's very, very basic. And it leads us to react in situations in a natural way without thought. Intuition is different. So intuition is a, a, a sense or a feeling or a knowing that is not based in rational thought. So we can intuitively know something or sense something even though we might not have any um, visual confirmation or any other kinds of information coming through our five senses. So, so one of the, the words or synonyms that I thought for, for intuition is our sort of our sixth sense. This is a different kind of knowing. It's a hunch. Um, it's a gut feeling. Uh, it's sometimes referred to as an inner voice. Um, for me, the intuition, the sense comes first. Sometimes it is in my gut. Um, it's, it's deciding to turn down one street as opposed to another. Um, just on on that mm, hunch <laughs> and then finding out that you were right to do that maybe there was an accident on the other street or or whatever okay you take one route as opposed to another and and find out later that there was a reason for doing that um so that's intuition so an inner voice to me, my inner voice happens after I have an intuitive feeling. My inner voice attempts to put language to my intuition, which I think is what's beautiful about a lot of tarot readers. You know, somebody like Angela from Mystic Moon, she's an intuitive tarot reader. What she has the ability to do is connect to her sense of knowing her intuitive sense through the cards and then she can articulate that intuitive knowing she can actually translate that into um, words to give messages to us that to me is different from my spiritual guides who give me information and this was one of the blurry areas because is our intuition connected to our spiritual knowing? I'm not even sure that I've, I've determined whether or not um, I've clarified that for myself. Um, because I know when I hear a message from spirit, that's definitely not a part of me. I'm clairaudient. And I, I hear things that... All I can say is it sort of comes out of the ether. And maybe many of you have this um, kind of gift as well. And there are different psychic gifts um, or six senses, right? There's clear audience and clairvoyance and um, clairsentience. So there's a lot of, of ways to get information that I think comes from the spirit realm to us. Um, which I think is different than intuition. It's different for me. So one of the things that I've wondered is, is my intuition somehow connected to my soul knowing? Is there a greater knowing that connects me not to 
spirit messages that come from without, but but actual soul knowing that is within me based on connecting to the energy fields that's around me, what's going on energetically, which I can't, which I'm not consciously aware of. So that was another concept that came out in my study about intuition is that it is not, it is connected to unconscious and subconscious knowing. Um, and w when we're conscious, we're using our prefrontal cortex. We're using this part of our brain up here to um, regulate things, to, to categorize them, to understand them based upon a um, conscious information that's coming into us like data, right? We're getting this data and we're <clears throat> making conscious choice. So um, those were some of the first explorations. One of the things that I found uh, and I thought was important to share with you in the video is what people do, what highly intuitive people do. Um, turns out that a lot of business um, like I found studies from Harvard and um, a lot of business related studies um, because people who are really effective businessmen it, they 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 rely on their intuition a lot they'll get a hunch about something and follow it and that turns out to be correct and so there's this importance when we're thinking about like success really highly successful people um, know how to use their intuition and and bring that into conscious action um, in order to be more successful in fact I uh, found this quote by C Steve Jobs and Steve Jobs said that intuition was more powerful than intellect more powerful than intellect, which I thought was interesting. So, um, so some of the things that you can do to hone your, or highly intuitive people do, are also things that we can sort of practice to get better with, or hone our intuition, or learn to connect to our intuitive knowing more. Um, and I'll get there in a second. What some of those things are. What I want to add here is that. What the block for me in doing this video was that became clear to me this morning had to do with the fact that um, I was using my intellect or my cognition, my capacity to think, my left brain, if you will, or my prefrontal cortex to try to understand a concept that was very much not about that. <laughs> so, like it was, it, I'm trying to use this layer to understand something that very much defies that conscious knowing or that ability to, to analyze. Um, and, and that that was part of the problem. I was looking through that lens. And yet we have to use that lens. It's an important one. We have our prefrontal cortex for a reason. We need our executive functioning for a reason. And it occurred to me that um, there's also a difference between when we think about masculine and feminine energy, and you know we're all both things, right? But it occurred to me that women, feminine energy is more intuitive knowing. And I asked the question, don't have any answers, but if it's not maybe related to the fact that we bear children and because we bear children we have um, we rely on this other kind of knowing because women are largely more intuitive if if you're thinking not not that men can't be intuitive don't get me wrong we all do, and not that women can't be intellectual but if we think about the energy of the two ways of knowing intuition is largely uh, a divine feminine trait and that intellect and scientific knowing that that breaking down of things that analyzing of things is largely a divine masculine trait 
Now remember what, what the ultimate thing that we're trying to achieve is a good combination of both. So we can rely on our analytical knowing when we need to. We can um, delve deeply into something and pick it apart and understand it. Um, but we also can use our intuitive knowing, which is why I found it so interesting that um, there were business studies that had really delved into uh, effective, that the most effective business people could do both. It's not surprising if you can merge those two ways of knowing together and, and flow with them, use them when you need them, that you would be more powerful because you're relying on more, you have more capacity, right? So that was the block for me, um, was, was making sure that I was doing that with, with what I was doing my process through this. Um, so here's some things you can do to get in touch with your intuition. And by the way, I think that when we ignore our intuition, um, or somebody in our life tells us that our intuitive knowing is wrong or off, that's when we start to feel crazy, right? I've ignored my intuition. I've had intuitions. And then, and then somebody says, no, 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 that's not true at all. That's not going to happen at all. I promise you that's just not the way it is. Not, no, 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 no. And then it is that way. And um, what that's done for me is it's actually strengthened my intuition. But when somebody's telling you that your intuition is off, you start to doubt it yourself and you go, well, maybe I am wrong. Why would I, why would I sense this? What's wrong with me? Am I projecting or is it a fear or whatever? Am I, what is wrong with me that I, that I have this intuitive knowing and now you're telling me that it's incorrect? So I think it's important that we get in touch with what is our intuition and then we have, we have confidence in it. It's a great confidence booster for ourselves overall to find out that we can rely on that, that intuitive uh, sense. So here are 10 things you can do to get in touch with your intuition. Um, this article, which I will post, is called, it's from Huffington Post, and it's 10 things highly intuitive people do differently. So I'm going to use it just as a, um, a guide for what we can actually do to improve or connect more deeply with our intuition. It says they listen to their inner voice. So when you have a hunch, you have a feeling, you go with it. The more you listen to it, the more you follow it, the more it gets strong. It starts speaking louder the more you can hear it clearly and the more you believe in it the more you 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 have confidence in it right so it says the number one thing that distinguishes intuitive people is they listen to rather than ignore the guidance of their intuitions and gut feelings um, the second thing they take time for solitude and that means not connecting to other things, even the internet, even other stimulus. You've got to get quiet enough and spend time with yourself enough to be able to hear. You cut out the chatter. If we're so wrapped up in the chatter that's going on outside of us, we're not quiet enough to hear. Now, on a brain-based level, when you're doing things like meditating or deep relaxation, um, you know, that's when you're cutting out, your, your prefrontal cortex just uh, slows down, it quiets, the activity in it just decreases. So the more you can actually in your daily life have moments of stillness and solitude and quiet um, with no stimulus, with no external input, um, here's the hack. This comes from Mark Robert Waldman, who I work with through neuro coaching. And the hack is to yawn and slowly stretch. Um, he teaches at Loyola Marymount University in the executive MBA program. He teaches this technique, again, to you know, corp 
corporate executives, you know, the high high up people who are making these um, decisions and like Steve Jobs, you know, making making decisions that are going to impact, um, have huge impact on, on their corporations. And they deal with a lot of stress. And so he taught this slow yawn, slow stretch, and he suggests that people do it just throughout the day for two minute intervals. If you take two minutes out of your day at regular intervals, like just have set a mindfulness clock app on your phone and have it go off every few hours and then stop whatever you're doing, yawn, slow stretch. It's a, it'll calm your prefrontal cortex down of all that input that it's been pulling in and it'll, it'll enable you to connect back into your body and into yourself. And I think that that's really important way to connect then with your intuition. So that is a brain-based, um, scientifically verified <laughs> technique. Um, the yawn is the hack to calm your prefrontal cortex and, and allow deeper parts of your brain to sort of t turn on. So, um, the next idea is that they create. So highly intuitive people create. And it talks here about, um, you know, creative people are highly intuitive. And if you practice creativity, you can boost your intuition. If you practice or get in touch with your intuition, you can boost your creativity. They're, they're, they work together. So working on one will increase the other. So do something that is creative as much as you can allow yourself to just let that go and don't self judge when you're doing it. Um, a lot of people have mentioned to me um, about creating the Oracle cards that especially when they see ones that are really fabulous and there are t tons that are really fabulous. Um, oh, I can't create like that. You know, they're, they, put a block up because they're comparing themselves against somebody else. Well, creativity um, is a, a healing process for you. You're not doing it for anybody else. You know, maybe at some point you end up with something that you want to share, but you don't ever have to share it. The process of doing it is what's important. So it turns out that as you're being creative, um, you're allowing that voice or that intuition to express itself. So the more you can do that, the stronger your connection to your intuition will be. So don't, uh, don't put blocks up and compare yourself to other people. Don't say, well, I'm not as artistic as or I'm not as creative as. That's a block and that's going to block your intuition. So just allow yourself. Let some people use, in fact, um, one of the women in the group sent me some paintings she had done with her non-dominant hand. So that would be an excellent technique to use is don't use your dominant hand to create whatever it is you're creating. Try using your non-dominant hand. Try just intuitively pulling um, a color and seeing what happens. Just let your hand um, you know, create, take off the, the constraints. You know, you can even take off the constraint of it needing to be about that topic. Just let it flow for a while. So um, the next one is that they practice, highly intuitive people practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is bringing your attention into the moment without judgment. Bringing your attention into this moment and just taking time to notice without judgment what is happening. Um, we often are not in the moment. We're often, I think, not even really feeling our bodies. We don't even take time to feel the pain in our bodies. We might, it might be going on, but we don't even notice it, which is why the slow stretching works. So that brain hack that I gave you for, you know, that you would do in solitude to connect with yourself as you tune out everything else um, is also a mindfulness practice. Um, it, it 
brings your attention into the here and now, the slow stretching is connecting you to your body. And as you stretch, you might just take time to notice where you're holding tension. And it's not so that you say or judge the tension. You don't say, wow, I really have a lot of pain in my neck. I wonder what I did yesterday. I wonder if I slept wrong. No, you just say, oh, there's pain in my neck. And then you just roll right through it or whatever stretch you're doing. Oh, there's tension in my back. It's just a recognition and a knowing. And then you move on. You keep, keep, um, keep your attention on the here and now. So I want to add that when you are, when your brain registers something like a pain in your neck and you just notice that you're holding tension there and you just give yourself that thought oh I'm holding pain in my neck your brain will actually send a signal to relax automatically you don't have to tell it to relax just the fact that you brought up the recognition that you're holding the tension will enable you to begin to to relax it your brain can't send the signal if it's not if you're not consciously acknowledging it. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so um, the next one was they listen to their bodies. Look, I didn't even think about that. So um, it's <clears throat> listening to your body in several ways. It says intuitive people learn to tune into their bodies and heed their gut feelings. So now I want to add that your gut has I think it's like a hundred million. They call it the second brain because it's got so many um, neurons in your in your gut. <laughs> it is another way of knowing, and your gut communicates with your brain, and your brain communicates with your gut. These two are in constant communication, leading back to why, of course, diet is so important, and gut health is so important, and probiotics are so important. Um, we do have a connection that we're still studying. They don't know all there is to know about it, but this is now called the second brain your gut is. Um, it's where a lot of disease starts is in the gut. And um, I think that, that it's related primarily to stress and other toxic thoughts. And your thoughts alone can cause stress in your life. And then you're sending that information into your gut and your gut gets sick. So um, once you start tuning into your body and being aware of what you're feeling in the moment, that's when you're going to um, sense what's happening in your body and the shifts in energy and be able to hear um, that intuitive guidance. The next one, number six, says they connect deeply with others. It's beautiful. So there, um, there's a term in psychology called empathetic accuracy. When we see something happen on, on television, you know, you can, you can see somebody go through a painful situation and you cry or in a movie. You know, I just went to see um, um, that movie, Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, the second one. Such a fun movie. Um, but there were really tender moments in that movie. And, you know, I was crying. It happens a lot in movies. Well, what's going on there is empathetic accuracy, where we are tuning into the emotional state of another person. And that is a kind of... Um, intuition is a kind of feeling that we have that we can do um, that's really beautiful and we can do that with all kinds of emotions so in positive ways you know you see something joyful or tender or beautiful then we can be mirror in a way that that emotion we can connect into it and actually feel it in our own bodies um, we also do that through negative things. So that's important to remember. So when somebody um, walks into a room, a highly intuitive person can 
um, be impacted by that energy. If that person is grumpy or out of sorts, a highly intuitive person will be impacted by that and be um, sometimes if you're conscious then a highly intuitive person can actually put up a block and say I'm choosing to put up a conscious block to not accept that energy but if you're not um, aware of your intu intuitive capacity and that that's going on um, then there's no filter there and so if toxic people and toxic energies are coming towards you, you're absorbing them and taking them in too. And it's not from you. It's not something that happened inside of you. But now you're actually through your intuitive sensing and knowing you're connecting into them. And now it is in you too. Um, another one, it says they pay attention to their dreams. So... Obviously, it's our unconscious, subconscious that's speaking through dreams. And when we pay attention to our dreams and we're curious about them, we attempt to um, understand them and ask questions and gain clarity. Um, that is a way of connecting into our intuitive knowing. The seventh one is they enjoy plenty of downtime. If we're so busy running around, taking care of everybody else, we can't take time to hear the inner voice. It's drowned out by all the activity and all the other stuff going on. So again, going back to the you can take time in your day, even if you're a very busy person, to do the yawn, slow stretch. You know, usually by the third or fourth yawn, they're really genuine yawns. And then once you're very practiced at it, you can almost hit it on the first yawn, the first time. It just triggers, I'm going to yawn. <laughs> it just triggers an automatic relaxation response. So if you if you can't take a lot of downtime, then, um, you know, try to improve your downtime. Even if it's five minutes, and hey, if you have kids, this is a good self-regulating tool to teach them. Um, I remember when my son was young, I recognized that putting him in timeout wasn't working. The person I needed to put in timeout was me. And um, to stop looking at it as a punishment and start looking at it as a reward or as a kind of, you know, a timeout. So when I made that shift and I said to him, you know what, sweetheart, I am getting really upset and really angry and I'm about ready to yell at you or to punish you. And, you know, mommy needs to take a time out. I need to think about this. I need to go be by myself for a few minutes. It was really helpful because what I was teaching my son is that when I got into a highly um, anxious or aggravated or upset kind of place emotionally and kids feel that you know when we're in uh, when we're being irritated and stuff like that for me to take the time out and then come back in a calmer state to deal with the problem and I know it's not always possible I'm not saying <laughs> leave them to destroy the house and put yourself in time out but I'm just saying a lot of times it actually is possible for us to take a time out and say, I need five minutes, but when I come back, we'll talk about this and figure it out. Or I'm going to take five minutes to figure out the best way to handle this situation because I don't want to, I don't want to react. And um, it actually teaches them some self-regulating so that they, when they get in that spot, they could end up choosing it. Remember, you're modeling for them. Oh, I just need time by myself for a little bit, Mom, before we continue this conversation. <laughs> and and you would probably find that there's a reduction in the amount of um, conflict. And so even now my son is 17, we kind of more regularly do that. We don't always do it. It's impossible to be perfect and, um, you know, sunshine and unicorns all the time. But, um, but we often do, both of us say, I can't be here right now in this conversation. I need to step away. I'll be back, but I can't be here because I'm going to do something I don't want to do. So, um, so that was enjoy plenty of downtime. And, you know, I don't know why the rest of that 
article didn't print out. So I'm going to pull it up on my phone because I know it's in here to do the last three things. Um, it should be there, it should be there, it should be there. Psychology Today. See how that works? Gotta love the smartphones. <laughs> okay. It says, uh, wait a minute. Too many things open. Okay, well, I went to another Psychology Today article. I wonder if this one, if I go back. I'm sorry. Oh, well. Um, let's just do these last ones. What is intuition and how do we use it? So these are the other suggestions. Keep a journal. You know how I feel about that. Journal is really important. It says writing down your thoughts and feelings on paper, even if you think you have little to say, helps the non-conscious mind open up. You may find you're writing words and phrases that don't make sense to you or stir emotional responses rather than intellectual responses. When this happens, it leads to, it says, turn off your inner critic. Oftentimes we rationalize away those voices within. This time, listen without judgment. Allow the inner dialogues to happen without fear or ridicule. So if you're writing in your journal, you don't have to write to make it make sense all the time. Let yourself do automatic writing or ask to channel your guides or uh, ask your higher self to come out or just let yourself write some random words and see what comes up and then turn off that inner critic and just let that dialogue or let that stuff flow out and see if that helps connect you to your intuitions. There's Sometimes there might be some stuff there. Um, it says, find a solitary place, a place where you can allow emotions to flow freely as an imperative part of finding and retaining the building blocks of intuition. Here you may also want to create an emotional connection to an object, a color, a piece of music or literature, anything that will allow feelings to stir that are solely from within and not carry intellectual or rational reasoning. So basically, when you're getting in touch with your intuition, you want to, as much as possible, turn off the rational mind, the critic, the, the judge, the... Um, the scientist, and you want to turn, at least turn down the volume on that, and you want to turn up this other way of expressing and flowing. Um, one suggestion I made to a client recently who is a musician, actually I've had two clients who are musicians, um, one is a cellist and one is a, um, plays a guitar is just when you're working with an idea or a, th or a thought, you know, like intuition, just take and sit down and start playing music. And, and you can just let it flow and see what comes out. I used to do that with the piano. Uh, sometimes some really miraculous, and you could set your, um, you know, your phone recorder to record it and see what comes up. Because if you get into a nice, state there. It's almost like lucid dreaming. Um, and I don't know if it's true with other things like um, writing or with, um, you know, painting. I don't know if it can because I'm, I've never explored it, but I definitely know that I've been in that place when I've been playing music or composing music. And I don't think you necessarily have to be a great composer or, or even a great musician to do that. Um, a drum or another instrument that's relatively easy to play and pick up. My father loved, loved Native American flute. And he, in his um, later life after, I think it was after he lost his wife, but I'm, I'm not positive. He actually um, collected several and he used to sit in a certain spot in his house and just play his flute. And I, I think it was very healing for him, and he really loved doing that. And he didn't take any lessons. Um, he just allowed himself to explore. And it was really 
a beautiful thing for him. So I guess my encouragement is you can also access your intuition and connect with it and allow that creativity to, to flow out through music, creating your own music. I bet you could do it through dance too, if you were really uh, very comfortable. In fact, I think there are people who kind of do that, you know. I see Kayla from Evolving Spiritually. She occasionally um, posts dances that she does or little glit, glit pieces of dances. Sometimes they're on like um, Instagram, I think is where I've seen them. And I think in some respects, she's just letting her body flow and she's a dancer. So she's letting her body move to the music and express itself and this is um a part of i think connecting to intuition not a surprise that she's an intuitive tarot reader as well so that's the the talk today on intuition i hope there were some good tips for you not just in to consider what it is but the ways that you can begin to connect with it if you have some ideas that you want to add some ideas that will clarify intuition or your take on it, how it functions for you in your life, or you have some resources to pass along, please make a comment in the comment section and share them with us. That'd be great. Okay, so, oh, so why do my, it's been a few days and then I forget what I'm doing. So let's call in Spirit and see if he can, Spirit, let me start again. <laughs> Connect with spirit, call spirit in, and pull and goddess oracle card. Dear spirit of the universe of love and light, please be with us in this time and space. As we focus our collective intention on gaining wisdom and guidance for our journey toward healing and self-mastery, we ask for open hearts and minds to receive the messages that will serve our highest and best good in the service of healthy love in all forms with deep gratitude thank you so spirit can i please have one goddess oracle card for the day one goddess energy giving us guidance Maybe about intuition or anything else you just want us to consider. <laughs> there it is. You just got to be patient sometimes. <laughs> It's funny because I literally heard in my head, patience, grasshopper, as I was as I was shuffling. That's why I giggled. So I think you say it's Seridwen, Sir, Seridwen, death and rebirth. Seridwen. Now this comes from the Goddess Oracle by Amy Sophia Marashinsky and Juana Janto. Seruduin, death and rebirth. I give you life. I give you death. It is all one. You travel the spiral path, the eternal path, that is existence, ever becoming, ever growing, ever changing. Nothing dies that is not reborn. Nothing is born that does not die. When you come to me, I welcome you home. Then I take you into my womb, my cauldron of transformation, where you are stirred and sifted, blended and boiled, melted and mashed, reconstituted, then recycled. You always come back to me. You always go forth renewed. Death and rebirth are but points of transition along the eternal path. 
to the Welch. Oh, it's Caridwin. Caridwin. I'm glad I know how to say it correctly now. <laughs> to the Welsh, Caridwin is a triple goddess, maid, mother, and crone, whose totem animal is the great white sow. She is associated with the moon, inspiration, poetry, prophecy, shape shifting, and life and death. Caridwin had two boys. One was beautiful and one was ugly. Because she wanted the ugly one to have something of his own, she made him a magical brew. The brew took a year and a day to complete and would make him inspired and brilliant. She set Guion, her assistant, to watch the brew and bade him not to drink it. Accidentally, some drops of the brew splashed onto his hand and he put his hand in his mouth. Instantly, he knew everything, including the fact that Caridwin would seek his death. He ran away and she ran after him. After many shape-shiftings, he was swallowed by Caridwin, who gave birth to him nine months later. Well, that's fascinating. Caridwin's appearance in your life heralds a time of death and rebirth. Not surprising with these energies. <laughs> it really does, right? Something is dying and needs to be let go of. So something new can be reborn. Can be born, sorry. We know the earth's dance of death and rebirth as the seasons. Matter cannot be created or destroyed, but undergoes transformation. So do we. To live fully and in wholeness, we need to accept life in all that it is, which includes death and rebirth. Let go of what does not serve you and your wholeness. Perhaps you have reached the end of a cycle, a relationship, a job, and you fear letting it go. Or feel that you are dying when only a piece of you needs to give way to the new. Perhaps the idea that there is death and only death is too painful for you to accept. Living in a patriarchal culture has deprived most of us of the goddess's way of death and rebirth. Wholeness is nurtured when we become conscious that every step on the path of life is also a step toward death and rebirth. Wholeness is achieved. When we can say yes and do our dance with death and rebirth, Caridwin says, you will always get back what you give to me. It will be changed will be transformed, but you will get it back. Yeah, death is a hard one. Letting go is a hard one. Allowing something to die is a hard one. Because we don't want it to. But, you know, it is all transformation, right? It just becomes something else. But I think that truly, this has got to be one of the hardest things to sort of allow and let go. That, um, that fear of death, I think, is really one of the biggest blocks for us. And yet, <clears throat> connecting in the spiritual way to this, this sense that our life is evolving and we are becoming whole and that it, there is a series of cycles in our own lives like the seasons and that we need to be constantly allowing things to die instead of putting them on life support. <laughs> we do that, don't we? We do that. We fight death, and it's natural. 
and I'm not talking about, you know, people in our lives and letting go of them and death, although that's a part of the journey too. Um, but I'm thinking about, you know, like relationships. We put them on life support. They're no longer healthy and vibrant and living and vital. They're no longer changing us for the better. It's sort of like watching somebody suffer, and prolong their process of death. It's sort of maybe, in a way, a little more beautiful just to allow it to go. Not put it on life support because of what was alive once. I had a dog uh, for 14 or 15 years, and the last year of her life was a struggle for her. And I had made this agreement, I make this agreement with all my pets, you know, I'll give you the best life I can. And I'm not suggesting, by the way, at all, anybody's process is their own process. So. But I make this agreement that says, you know, I'm going to give you the best life I can. I'll feed you. I'll love you. And when you are suffering, when you don't eat for 24 hours, when you don't get up for 24 hours, when I know it's the end. I'm not talking about when they're sick and you need to take them in, but I'm talking about, you know, at the end. I will let you go. I will assist you. I don't want didn't want her to suffer. It was so hard, you know, our son was little and she'd been with us for so long. And um, I had somebody come out to do the assessment. Basically, they would do youth, they would euthanize her. Um, and so I called these people and I said, well, I just want, you know, your assessment before we make this choice, right? Because you do sort of feel like you're, why would you let, why would you choose to aid that death, right? It's a real struggle. And, and so the woman said, there were two women, but the primary person, the vet that was there said, you know, I want you to know that your dog loves you so much. She's holding on for you. She's going to continue to hold on because she's got such loyalty for you. But she doesn't have a quality of life right now, you know, because she could no longer get up to go to the bathroom by herself. She wasn't eating. And that had been my agreement with, with my animals when it gets to that point. That's my sense. And I could have, you know, taken her in and save her, save her, you know, but I knew that that would not be healthy for her. I, what would I be prolonging for a week, a month? Um, it was kind of the natural course of her life had, had at 14, 15, it, it was played out. So I, um, I said to her, um, sh she basically said, it, it, it's okay to allow her to go like that that would be kind and loving for you to do and so even though it was hard it was the kindest most loving thing I could do was to let her go and not hold on not not make her suffer trying to pick her up and go in and try to do some sort of complicated surgery or whatever it was the kindest thing I could do to allow her to go and assist that not to prolong her suffering and so I'm thinking, you know, about the death and rebirth card. And I know we're constantly going through death and rebirth in our lives. And I think that uh, a lot of times we, well, I think about relationships a lot when I think about the death and rebirth. But it could be about anything. And now I'm thinking about that, you know, situation with, with my dog and and the idea of putting something on life support or you know trying to prolong something and it's almost like it's almost like you dishonor the original 
beauty of the love if you do that because now your image that if you stretch out that process of the dying if you if you refuse the death then it's like that's what you remember is you're stretching out the time of the death instead of allowing it to go with love so that what is then preserved is the the loving part of the relationship does that make sense i hope that makes sense <laughs> death and rebirth and then you you allow that to end so that new things can come in and sometimes that might even be a rebirth of of an old relationship or you know whatever but you're allowing the parts that need to die to die away in order to make room for the new to come so anyway Caridwen 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 I think is what it said Caridwen you gotta rely on your instinct though right not instinct intuition i think our instinct fights death there you go thank you spirit instinctually we have a drive to live and fight death but intuitively if we can tap into that intuitive understanding, we might intuitively know that it's okay to let go. But our instinct is driving us to hold on. Fight death. You know, don't, don't allow something to die. There's a good distinction between instinct and intuition, but intuition might say, no, it's okay, it's time to let go. That would be the better thing to do. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do these today. I want to do Wisdom for Healing cards. Um, so, Wisdom for Healing uh, by Carolyn Mace. So, Spirit, can we please have one Wisdom for Healing card? One Wisdom for Healing card. There's two. Oh, this is beautiful. Let's do this one first. Surrender to the divine. How awesome is that? Identify one fear that you need to surrender unconditionally into the hands of the divine with emphasis on unconditional. This prayer can truly change your entire life. Your goal to lift the burden of fear from your soul. It might be a fear of death or a fear of letting go. So it says, surrender. Surrender it unconditionally into the hands of the divine. Yeah, surrender it unconditionally into the hands of the divine. And then, as a little extra note today, it says, enhance your physical health. Think about how you view yourself as a physical being. Do you perceive yourself as weak or strong? Do you tend to make excuses for why you're not proactive in your healing when you see what can and should be done? Your goal to initiate one positive action in your life to enhance your physical health. One. Sometimes I think we bite off more than we can chew. We're like, okay, like I'm going to go in and I'm going to make all these changes tomorrow. It's going to happen. And that's what happens right around, um, you know, January or, Jan yeah, the first, the new year. Everyone makes the blanket statements of your whole life. They're going to transfer their whole life right now. And then, of course, it lasts for two weeks <laughs> or a week or whatever. But one change today Small changes over the course of time, small changes lead to big differences. So um, in these cards today, we've got life and death. 
understanding cycles, letting go, allowing rebirth. Know that when you're letting go, you are allowing rebirth. As long as you're holding on, it can't be reborn. Nothing can come in while you're holding on. So while whatever you're holding on to is on life support for you, <laughs> nothing new can happen. You... Sorry, I got cut off. <laughs> so while you're holding on and you have it on life support, nothing new can happen was the last thing I said. And then simply, um, to turn these into affirmations today, um, I, I surrender um, my fear, and you can just put in what that fear would be, if you have a specific fear, um, to the divine, or I surrender my fear of death, I surrender my fear of letting go of something, allowing something to die, um, knowing, and you could surrender it to to Caridwen too. It doesn't have to be to the, you know, I mean, because this is the energy we're working with. Knowing that rebirth will happen. Allowing rebirth to come in. And then um, make one, this is about making one commitment to a, a physical health type change. And I think it could be not just physical, it could be anything um, that is toward healing. So making a commitment to doing affirmations every day, making a commitment to writing in your journal every day, making a commitment to doing at least one gratitude at the end of the day, any change that you commit to, but remember small changes over time. It doesn't have to be a bunch, small. Um, commit to drinking more water, commit to um, not complaining. And that's another whole other video that I'll, I'll do just on, on committing to not complain. Um, so that's it for the day, and I'm um, sorry for getting cut off there. There'll be a little glitch in the video, but I went way long. I didn't mean to. Um, um, sorry. <laughs> you guys have a great day, and come join the group. Come join the Facebook group. We would love to have you. Now 68 or 9 of us in that group. It's a lovely group and nice support and great encouragement all around. Have fun getting in touch with your intuition. Let it guide you. Yeah. Bye.